Good evening, everyone. I'm Richard Moses, president of the Lower East Side Preservation Initiative, also known as LESPI. And I'm pleased to welcome you tonight to our tribute uh, to our friend Corky Lee. I believe that many, maybe most of you knew Corky, some of you very well. We at LESPI are happy and honored to have had the opportunity to know and work with Corky for the few years that we did. And like so many others, we were shocked and greatly saddened when he died unexpectedly of COVID in January. I greatly admired Corky's wisdom, knowledge, and work as a photojournalist. And as important to me personally, I very much enjoyed spending time with him, which I was most often able to do in the production of Lesby's book, Chinatown Lens on the Lower East Side, and during the subsequent gallery exhibits based on the book's photographs, which usually involved a lot of gallery sitting. I truly miss him. I want to say that uh, this webinar uh, tonight uh, is set up as a Zoom webinar, meaning you guys can see us, but we can't see you. And um, I also want to let you know that uh, if you have questions during the presentation, um, please put them in the Q&A that you should see at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we'll answer questions at the very end of the presentation. And although we may not be able to answer everyone's questions, uh, we'll answer as many as we can. I now want to introduce Carolyn Ratcliffe, Lesby Vice President, who is also Director of Art Lowy Sida Foundation, and who arranged for Lesby to be introduced to Corky and co-curated the gallery exhibits with him. Hi, um, you know, meeting Corky was quite an event. Um, Gigi Lee was the chairperson for Community Board 3, and I approached Gigi to ask her for who would we contact about uh, a photographer for the um, book that we wanted to produce, the lens on uh, Chinatown lens on the Lower East Side. And she said, you have to contact Corky Lee. He is the photographer to Chinatown. So we did, and we met with Corky, and um, he was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, his understanding, his passion, um, his humanity about uh, people generally and particularly Chinese Americans and the part that they've played in American history and that has so often been overlooked. Um, working with Corky was like pure pleasure. He's one of the most informative, intelligent, funny, nice people that I've ever worked with. And because of Corky, we met Edward, Juke, Karen, and Adron, who helped to make this book a really successful venture for us. And it, it was just also, it was about, when Leslie started these books, it was about celebrating our streetscapes and the people that live there, showing that historic districts were not just sort of like stage sets, that people actually live in them, enjoy them. And, uh, you know, that there's a whole range of, of life that goes on in a community. And that's what we were trying to get the point across that we need to preserve parts of our community to have a frame of reference when kids grow up, that they recognize something um, and that we can pass down important bits of our history. And Orgy was so tuned into that. It was just, uh, it was amazing. And so all of you, that are the other photographers of Edward, Karen, Joke, Adron, that participated in creating this book and the exhibits. You know, it was such it was such a gift to the community and certainly to our organization. Um, we couldn't think of a better way to celebrate Asian American History Month uh, than by having us all get together to celebrate Corky, um, his life, his gifts, and your gifts as well, that you've given each one of us with your photographs to share your community. Um, it's, it's something important about all of us being able to realize 
the uniqueness of the gifts that we each have to give to our city and to our country. And I think that's something that each and every one of you have done and that Corky was instrumental in bringing this together and making it happen. So I hope you will all enjoy this presentation and look forward to seeing the rest of it. Should I, should I um, share the screen now, Carolyn? Yeah, these are some images from the book and, uh, and from the different exhibits that we've done. We did two photography exhibits, one at um, 72 Canal Street, and that was a huge success. We had a big outpouring of people. Uh, and then we did the Moscow and Mont um, exhibit that uh, Corby and Edward, in particular, manned <laughs> and Richard. And I was there for one day. But it was just sort of, uh, it was a meet and greet uh, beyond belief and, and just being on that corner with everybody coming by uh, to see the work and to say hi and to enjoy being out. That, uh, so Richard, do you wanna share those images? Yeah, I'm having a hard time uh, getting, them, uh, getting them up here. Hold on, bear with me. Okay. This, ha this seems to happen where it, it doesn't recognize <laughs> Uh, what I'm trying Technology to, uh, is always challenging. Let's see if it works now. Here we go. Uh, okay. Yeah, just about there. Hold on. Okay. So. That's the cover of our book. That's one of Karen's images that I love that image. It's just the joy and exuberance of the kids and experience the holiday and also the way that one kid is just sort of like blocking out the vision of the other kid inadvertently because she's so happy and so excited that uh so it was a great lead into the book the next this is us at the exhibit at 72 canal uh, richard corky uh i'm over there in the corner uh, I think that's Margaret's back that we've got there. But that exhibit was so well attended and it was such a pleasure to have everybody come and celebrate. Richard, okay. This is the exhibit at uh, Moscow and Mott. And there's a great image of Corky and Edward manning the booth. That, uh, and you get an idea of all the different works that were exhibited. It, I think it was Corky's idea to put the Chinese newspapers across the, bunch, the bottom. And this exhibit was sponsored as part of Chinatown Arts Week with, um, and was co-sponsored by um, Think Chinatown, which has been a real gift to get to meet everybody, Amy and Kong, and to work with them to produce this event. We also want to um, thank the Chinese American uh, Heritage Foundation as well for their uh, their support of this event tonight. Right, and sharing it uh, yeah. with your, your email list. Yeah. Here's Corky crossing Mo uh, Moscow Street, uh, replete with uh, camera and mask. And there's Edward Kaja <laughs> with the iced tea. <laughs> Uh, so next. I think that's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So that gives you a brief rundown of Leslie's uh, involvement. So uh, I'd like to introduce Edward. Edward Chung, who is coming up next. Oh, I'm sorry, Karen. Hi. <laughs> Karen, you're it. Oh, okay. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, I'd like to share screen right now. Uh, give me one sec. Hopefully this works. Okay, can you all see this? Oh, that's great. Well, thumbs up. Okay. Um, the, I want, would like to start um, by showing you this um, um, image. Uh, it was from CBS, CBS Sunday 
morning news. Uh, this is one of Corky's most favorite uh, TV shows. Um, we used to get up uh, Sunday mornings just to watch it. Um, and if he was away, it's, we would find a way to record it and, and watch it again um, and watch it together. Um, so I knew that he would be extremely pleased that um, he's in the show, um, even if it was for a brief moment. Um, Um, one can't um, think of uh, Asian Pacific Heritage Month. And um, without thinking of Corky, because his photos are truly reflective of the Asian American community. And so um, this title they gave photographer of Asian American life is, is um, is what he was. He, he photographed this for more than five decades. Um, that was his life mission. Uh, it started out with the Chinese American community. That's the community that he's from. And and I think um, as he saw the struggles and the um, Asian community um, push for justice, um, he started to see that there were a lot, a lot more that he can cover, um, and so uh, his his range of photography is very diverse um, in terms of subject matter um, and and issues. Okay, let's see. I don't know if this is bigger. Okay. I'd like to share with you um, a project that he had um, during the pandemic. Uh, he wanted to come out and shoot people in Chinatown in front of their uh, favorite Chinatown uh, restaurants. Um, he felt that this would be a good way to help promote um, the, the struggling businesses um, at the same time. Um, show what people like, where they like to go eat. And so here's Corky photographing um, two of his friends uh, in front of a Thai restaurant. And that's a, just a close up um, of them looking at Corky and not at me. Um, and of course, Corky was always there to promote Chinatown Lens on the Lower East Side. So he's carried a, a copy of the book somewhere and everywhere he went, he would show people. So he's very proud of this book and um, getting to collaborate and work with all the photographers. Here is another photo of Corky. And um, he's photographing a mother and daughter. And um, again, he wanted to photograph them in front of their favorite restaurant. So this is in front of Bo Key. Although I was really just, I was just trying to get him in action. So it wasn't the restaurant. Um, that you'll see, but it's it's quirky um, doing what he loves. And after uh, he photographs, he would normally um, go back home 
and take prints of the photograph he likes. And then he'll try to come back to Chinatown to give those prints to the people that he's photographed. Um, in this case, he already had photos that he printed and he wanted to show the mother and daughter um, some of the images that he had taken. And there's always a great story behind everything that he's taken. Um, so you could, you could be standing with him on the streets for hours. Um, and this is a photo that he took uh, with my cell phone uh, in front of One Ton Garden. I just happened to stand there. And he goes, well, this is the photo. And so I pose. Um, and then um, I was at Chinatown Ice Cream Factory and he goes, here, here you are, it's time to, you know, um, if you can stand there. And I, so I stood there. Um, and of course, this one is a um, photo of, that Corky took of me um, in front of um, a, uh, a storefront that was painted with a mural. And so that was um, on a cooler day. So my mom masked up and that was Quirky's concept was to photograph people in Chinatown. And um, I thought it was a great idea. You know, I thought um, it's whoever came by, he would stop and talk to and say, tell me what your favorite store is and show it to me and he'll go photograph them just like this. Um, here's a picture of two twins. They live in Chinatown and they would often, uh, you know, walk by and say hi to Corky. And he happened to see them one day. He says, show me where your favorite restaurant is. And, um, uh, it was wall hop, uh, on Mott street. So here's the photograph he gave to them. And I took, I took this fo photo of them holding the photo. Um, and you, as you can tell, they like to match too. So um, they're uh, um, quite beautiful in Corky's photo. And here's Corky again. Um, he's, he's on the streets and he sees somebody else and he says, hey, I got a photo of you. I, I wanna give this to you. So um, he's pointing out, you know, where he is in this picture and Here's Corky um, presenting the photo to his friend. Um, you know, he had a very generous heart and um, you know, he always wanted people to have um, a copy of the photo if he can give it to them. And if he saw them, he would try his best. Um, and oftentimes he would even call them and, and say, hey, I got a photo for you or he'll mail it to them. And people really appreciated that. Um, and of course, uh, last but not least, uh, Richard um, Corky was out um, in Richard's neighborhood because um, he wanted to pick up more of the Chinatown lenses on the Lower East Side books. And um, this was, um, I think, prior to him doing the exhibit. Um, on Moscow Street. So he really um, did enjoy um, getting to talk to people and show people about the book. And it usually sold out pretty quickly. So he would have to call up Richard for more books. So. And this was the exhibit at the Moscow Street with some friends and um, Corky was really proud of that cover photo uh, that I took of the children. Um, he really felt that um, it was reflective of Chinatown. Um, his whole life was about um, defying stereotypes. And he always felt that, you know, Chinatown was not just what you see in the movies, but that there are a lot of richness to Chinatown and uh, part of it was the Chinese New Year's 
and um, I would go out with Corky to photograph um, at the parades and um, and and I also would see Edward there as well, but I never really talked to Edward. Um, I think Edward was always um, crouching in the corner somewhere. I just always remembered seeing him crouching um, to take the low angle photos. Um, but, uh, Corky was very aware that um, all, of all the photographers that were there in, in, in these parades and um, he was always good friends with everyone. Um, but that was the photo he liked the most. Um, and uh, so that's why we're pointing at it. <laughs> um, kind of want to end it here. Um, or do you want me to, oh, okay, here, here's the full size photo of the kids having a great time and just not having um, a care in the world. These kids were just being kids, you know, and, uh, and Chinese New Year is, you know, I mean, there's a lot of money giving with the red envelopes, but you don't really need the money to, to have to have joy because they're they were having so much fun playing with the confetti and I kind of felt like I was an invisible um, observer um, just you know taking it from a distance um, and that's kind of how I like to shoot uh, <laughs> I don't want them to know that I'm really right there because then I don't want them to be something they're not but the kids were definitely very, very happy that day. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's timeless and, um, and um, happened on Elizabeth and Bayard Street. <laughs> so, um, do you, and I have some photos, should I talk about that later, Richard? That was as good as time as any, if you'd like to, yeah. Okay. Um, we thought about sharing photos uh, from the book. So this is also from Chinese New Year's and these are um, some of the seniors in Chinatown and they're wearing I Love New York uh, caps and red is the color. Uh, it's a very auspicious color of the New, new Year time. And uh, they're just drumming um, away and they're just having a great time. So, and then in the background, you could see the souvenir shops and um, it's classic New York um, with the I Love New York shirts. Um, this is from a, um, so these are my photos. Uh, this is from the um, American Legion's post and Corky uh, was very patriotic. He loved um, is being Asian American and Chinese American. And um, uh, it's much later in life, he joined the uh, American Legion's post um, in Chinatown. And um, he served as a, a past commander for the Sons of the American Legions. And he was very proud to represent his father who served in World War II. Um, so he's never missed, um, he's never missed a Veterans Day, a Memorial Day. Um, he never missed anything that um, had to do with serving our country. And so this was um, uh, a photo I know he would like because it was, it's definitely very patriotic. Um, I photographed a lot of parades with Gorky. Um, this is a lower rest photo, but um, it's from the Pakistani Indian um, Pakistani Independence Day parade, and um, Corky and I would just get in and we would shoot. Um, and uh, I forget that I'm like the only Chinese with Corky there because um, there are not too many Chinese Americans. Um, at this parade, um, but he taught me not to be afraid and to um, just get in there. So this is the um, um, uh, 
bhangra dancing that they're doing um and the dancers are really getting into the um the the, the sound of the the music so they didn't really notice that we were there and um i kind of want to show you photos that i thought quirky might like um we used to also cover a lot of rallies together and protests. And this was um, on May Day. Um, it's a protest for workers' rights. And um, we kind of would search the crowd looking for Asians. Um, and, you know, once in a while we'll find, we'll find um, a Asian contingent um, because that was what Corky wanted to see to, to show that representation. Um, so here are the workers. Um, it's, they're asking for equal rights for all workers. And this is to stop SB 1070 law. Um, so. And of course, I just want to end on um, a photo I like. <laughs> and this is a quiet photo um, from a um, parade celebration and um, it was just a very quiet photo. Little girl is just um, immersed in her cell phone. And it seems to be like this these days with the younger generations. The kids are um, much more savvier than I was when I was a little kid. And um, they just know how to use the phone and um, technology is um, kind of second nature. So I thought, I thought it was just a very interesting um, uh, that she's in this parade full of people, um, but um, she's really zoned in on the um, the phone and uh, and she's dressed like a princess. So, so that's that's all I wanted to show and talk about today. And I'll I'll stop the screen share. Hold on. Now. Let's see. Okay, I'm learning all this as I go. Uh, okay, hopefully I can I can stop it. Yeah, it should be up at the top. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, Karen, thank you. Uh, Edward, um, Edward, Edward Chang, another f photographer. Oh, uh, hey, um, let me share my screen. Uh, hold on, let me see if I can do this properly. Uh, is my screen still being shared? Yes. Yep. Hey, how's it going? Um, so I also happen to be in the book, um, not the cover image like Karen, but just sort of in the background, like behind Corky. Um, I had the pleasure of being, of sitting and watching the newsstand in October with Corky for a good number of days. And it's just sort of where I saw Corky as probably his happiest of like, we, we shut down traffic, we put, we put up some cones, uh, everybody showed up, uh, the weather was beautiful, there'd be f anywhere between like four people to 50 people just like sitting outside and just talking about how the community is and things, and things like that and just discussing between photography, the future of Chinatown, Chinatown in the past and things. Um, and it was just one of those ple really pleasure, like pleasant times of like, I thought we would have a lot more of that. Um, to be honest, after like that week of like every day with Corky, I was like, oh, I need a break from Corky. Uh, so I just sort of like, all right, I need a break from Corky. And then a week later, I was like, Corky calls me up. I was like, hey, but there's uh, something going on here. Why don't we go photograph this? Like, all right, let's go. And then that continued on. Like Corky would, ne would just wouldn't stop doing things. And um, the last I saw of him was like late, uh, a couple days after Christmas, and he called me up and says, sort of like, oh yeah, Garden Angels is doing, uh, putting up some posters, going to the subways, like, all right, let's 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 go take some pictures. Um, I came to the, to photographing 
um, Asian Americans ve- relatively late. Like I think one of the things that happened was when I did initially pick up a camera, it's like, oh yeah, this is what I want to do. I was like, I want to photograph my neighborhood and uh, just do a good job of like just sort of documenting things. Um, before I, before Corky knew me, I I knew who Corky was. It's just really hard to pick up a camera and not know who Corky is, especially growing up in Chinatown, like uh, maneuvering the streets and things like that. Everyone sort of knew who he was, and he, so um, my big draw was to after very quickly was to just do travel photography of like to run around it, to go to festivals and um, just photograph those. But every year I would come back for Chinese New Year because my family would kill me if I didn't come back for Chinese New Year and photograph um, the Chinese New Year festivals around, um, um, around Manhattan Chinatown and Brooklyn Chinatown. And that's where I would inter- uh, run into Corky and that's where the images that I made for the Lesbie book are from of like all these Chinese New Year pictures. Um, so th- it's sort of the inter like I'm just going to show sort of like the intersection between like work, my work and Corky's work of just uh, what, looking at Corky's work and just sort of like intersecting between my work of like I this is that same um, everyone has a camera during Chinese New Year so it's just sort of like what you point the camera at is just sort of like what you, what is important to you and what isn't important to you. And I find this like reoccurring theme of like, all right, I do want to capture what it means to be Chinese American of like to have, and there's the, there's like little cheap iconographics that we, that are being used of like, oh yeah, let's throw an American flag up there. Uh, Corky used that. Uh, Photographers back to Robert Frank used that, and um, but also having like a Chinese uh, Chinese flag built in. Corky actually has a very similar picture on like also in the book, like on page twenty six of like um, some girls in a beauty pageant, just sort of with an American flag, and then there's a it's split framed with like some some older people. Um, I like to sort of capture the chaos of it, of like just having the uh, having all this action also also happen at the same time, but it's sort of like trying to catch that serene moment. And Corky was really good at that, of like sort of separating out the, the chaos. And then when Corky told me about this book project, uh, he said, oh yeah, um, Lesby wants like a lot of architecture. I was like, oh, but I'm not good at the architecture stuff. Let me, let me see what I can squeeze in. It's like, all right, let me just like, there's like a fire escape in there. That's all, that's almost there. Um, but it became like, it just sort of became more than that. It's just sort of like, I was able to, like he was able to allow me to squeeze in images of like, just like kids just having a good time with like little lions and and, th- and things like that. Um, I had been photographing Southern Mantis uh, for a couple decades now. Of course, he introduced me to them initially. Um, and I've just sort of become more or less part of their troop, just sort of um, being able to follow them for an extended amount of time and just sort of, they expect me to just sort of show up with the camera. And I can just sort of get these little quiet shots and just not really like be, ex- uh, just sort of like expect, um, like know, when, know where people will be and just sort of have, um, know what the movements are and just sort of like be able to take pictures. Um, here, like um, Karen mentioned, like, oh yeah, I would always be crouching down and things like that. Corky would always introduce me as like, oh yeah, Edward's the photographer who photographs Chinese New Year a lot. Um, you'll recognize him. He's the one wearing knee pads all the time. And he's like, and he would always introduce me even like in the middle of the summer when I'm not, uh, when I'm just walking down the streets, yeah, he's the, he photographed Chinese New Year. He, he wears knee pads all the time. And it sort of becomes that moniker of like, when I'm actually doing work, I was like, you know, you know he's serious when he's got the knee pads on. <laughs> and then as much as I, there's the serenity, there's also like sheer chaos and sheer reorganizing of chaos. And this is just sort of like knowing what's about to happen. This is Golden Lion Club. This is like Chinese New Year, um, the end of Chinese New Year where they're going back to back into what their home is. So as I say, put on a big, a big show. 
and this is like and usually and this is just being able to have know what's going to happen have access to different like i'm on a second floor balcony at this point uh, photographing down um, being able to manage myself into that uh, position and just sort of and this is also what corky was very good at of like corky knew every angle around around chinatown and corky would be able to like negotiate of like oh yeah i just want to get in here and make uh, get a picture uh, get a picture of like um, I remember when after 70 Mulberry Street um, uh, the fire at 70 Mulberry Street he was able to be get on, on rooftops across the way and just sort of like oh yeah let me just photograph like from above of like just to see how the damage is and thing and things like that so it's just sort of like just that knowledge of the knowledge of of the of the neighborhood that was like just working it for like all these decades. So those are the images from the book. Um, and then over the past year, um, because I couldn't travel, I was just sort of reintegrated back into the Chinatown community. And I would just like photograph like different volunteer groups between the Think Chinatowns, the Send Chinatown Loves, the um, street sweeps and things like that, just sort of getting to know my neighbors again. And that was one of those real special things. And then more times than not, I would just see Corky like be in Chinatown. I was like, Corky, what are you doing down here? You're, you're in Queens. Like, oh yeah. But I also realized this is what he would do. Um, so these are some images from around that time. Uh, this is also, there was a point when um, Bernie, right after the inauguration, Bernie was like being a meme for everything. And it's sort of like, um, at first I didn't want to be like, oh yeah, I want to, I have some Photoshop skills. Let me just put Bernie in. And then I realized like, oh yeah, no one's going to put a meme of Bernie around Chinatown. And this is sort of what Corky was fighting for of like, just sort of this equal footing on everything of like, oh yeah, we should have like just as many memes of like, just as many memes, just as many actors, just as much representation. Um, And then further on, whoops, focus. Um, like I'm still photographing Chinese New Year. This is, um, at this point, Corky had passed away. Um, so this is me just like still photographing Chinese New Year, still trying to like organize chaos, still trying to get those quiet moments. Um, I photograph in black and white in film. And so this is all just like pictures from like, I just printed in the dark room of like, this is really what I'm currently working on. So I'm doing the, a lot of this, but I'm also coming back to uh, photographing like things from that I wouldn't normally photograph of just thinking about Corky of like, normally uh, Corky would just call me out of like, oh yeah, there's a protest for some workers and sometimes I would show up, sometimes I wouldn't show up. Um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Jing Feng had closed up their dining room area and there, there have been protests on the streets of like, oh yeah, what? Um, and I thought like, oh yeah, Corky would be there. And just sort of took out my camera and just like on a Tuesday afternoon, it's like, all right, let's just go photograph this and just sort of like see if I can get some imagery. And I tend to be doing that more and more of like trying to see if like, if I should feel like be that voice to fill in the, like to fill those shoes, to fill those very, very large shoes. Of, and I know I can't, I just sort of like, no one's ever going to fill those shoes, but it's just sort of like these images still have to get made. And then in addition, there's like been this trend of like this Renaissance and just getting anti-hate and Asian American identity. And I've just been photographing like rallies of rallies to that effect of like, and just sort of been making imagery for that. Um, and this sort of, Right now, like I look at my calendar, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this weekend there's a couple of events. I'm like, let's take out, let's take out the camera." Um, Corky would be there, and I still, in my the back of my head, expect like turn around and see Corky and just sort of hear a story from him or something like that. But he's also already there, as in essence. And that's and that's it. That's 
And then in addition, there's like the shooting, the photographing day to day of like, there's a lot of day to day life. I'm, I'm still photographed. I've always been photographing. So during the pandemic, I would just stand on this corner and just photograph people along the way of like, um, there, there was an, a great opportunity when 70 Mulberry Street, um, when there was still um, the barricades on Baxter Street of like just a photograph, they would close off traffic so I could just stand on Baxter and not, sorry, not Baxter, Bayard and not get run over. Um, they had since opened up traffic by this. Um, so like now I'm gonna get run over still taking these pictures. So I take pictures of like people passing by and people that I know I'll just stop and just sort of like uh, make an image of. This is, um, this is one of the Think, volunteer, uh, Think Chinatown um, uh, peoples. And I realized like as I was taking this picture that Corky had already taken this picture. Uh, Corky took a picture of, uh, this is Rochelle, um, of Rochelle further south on Mott Street also with a big plant and just sort of like, oh wow, this is like all these moments in Chinatown are like just sort of, re just like overlapping on themselves. And it's just sort of these like moments of, this is my picture of Corky on that same corner from over the summertime. And this is like over the news, um, after Corky's passing over the, over the newsstand, I just sort of like, you know, this is, this is the best way I can just sort of tribute uh, him. Just like put up a picture, put up a little bit of text and just sort of like have a little reminder for people passing by of like the, the giants that we, that we stand on, the, the giant shoulders that we stand on. And that's all I got. That's, those are, those are the memories. Um, yeah, so let me stop sharing my screen. Yeah, and then the other thing is like, at, because Corky would al always introduce me to everybody else. And that was one of the most amazing things about Corky. Um, I got to know, like, I'm born and raised in Chinatown, and I know, like, my own little circle of people. But then once I start know, started to know Corky, and then Cor Corky would introduce me to, like, every time I see Corky, Corky would introduce me to, like, six other people, and then six, six more people, and six more. And then, and then I sort of really got to know the neighborhood and got to know who was active in the neighborhood. And that was the most important part, and that's just sort of that community building that we're going to miss the most. Um, through this, I met like, um, I met, I met Karen, I met Joke, I met, um, Richard, Carolyn It's like, I wouldn't have known the, known any, any of you guys without Corky. And that's like, and my, and my world is just a better place with, with all of you. Um, all right, I'm going to tear up now. So I'm going <laughs> to stop talking. Uh, I see Jook smiling, so that's it's up to him now. Um, as much as I try to like get these serene moments um, in Jook's photos, Jook takes that serenity away and just sort of has this sheer chaos, which I absolutely love. And I'm just gonna let, let him take it. Jook. <laughs> hey, thanks. Uh, hello. Um, I'm. I'm happy to be able to participate in this um, Lesby Zoom event. So uh, knowing Corky um, professionally and also as a friend, but professionally I met Corky first and that was back in the 80s when my sister uh, introduced me to Corky uh, through the Asian uh, American Asian Journalist Association. And then I would run into Corky at uh, the OCA, the Organization of uh, Chinese Americans events. And whenever I was in Chinatown, it was only for a reason to, to meet up with Corky at uh, 21 Pell Street. So um, I wasn't a street photographer uh, but only later in my career as a commercial photographer that I uh, had the opportunity to find a, a new outlet for my uh, photographic style. So uh, as a commercial photographer, I was always um, 
told to compose a picture within a square frame or rectangular frame and, and use the golden uh, one thirds rule. So uh, I guess in, in, a, in that final uh, chapter in my photography career, I became a, uh, a 360 uh, panorama photographer. So unlike other photographers who need to sort out the chaos or the um, uh, <clears throat> un un unnecessary or unimportant elements, I'm, I'm trying to compose everything so they can live in harmony all in one picture. So uh, my, my work is lives online. It's not a video where it's linear and you just watch from beginning to end. So um, a spherical panorama is something in between where it's a moving picture and it's a live picture, so to speak. So um, I had um, two events that I wanted to just review for uh, the group. I met Corky um, out at Promontory Point in Utah because he was out there to uh, rephotograph uh, a historical photo where the Transcontinental Railroad was um, finished and met up at uh, the Promontory Point and they were doing the Golden Spike Ceremony. So in that famous photograph, he was, um, I mean, the, the uh, Chinese workers were um, not allowed to appear in that photograph. So historically, most people felt that the uh, Chinese railroad workers were non-existent or did not contribute to uh, one of the major industrial events in the late 19th century. Uh, century. So, uh, so I met Corky again out there and um, I'm going to share my screen now. Let's see. So these are um, images where I have difficulty printing them because they can be composed in, um, in uh, hundreds of different ways. But when you look at them, you'll come back and look at them again. It will be something different for you to look at. So let me share the screen. Uh, let's see. Uh, Safari, share, okay. Since I'm not reproducing the photograph that, I'm not showing the actual photograph that Corky took, I'm gonna start with him uh, at an exhibit at um, the um, gallery that he, hung an exhibit at the um, Pearl River Mart. Okay, so Corky is always uh, jesting and um, uh, finding something to look interesting when I say, let me take a picture of you, Corky. So either he's um, raising up his chopsticks or um, pointing at the person next to him uh, this time I got him to uh, make sure he can, people will know that that's his name card. So this is a spherical uh, image of one of his gallery shows and what he exhibited on the back walls. So I added um, a hyperlink to uh, th these photographs, these two photographs. So this was the photograph that Corky reenacted at Promontory Point. It was the 145th anniversary um, of the Golden Spike. So if you click on this link or this arrow, it, it uh, will reveal that it's a clickable link. So I cl I'll click on this and it should jump into um, a web, a uh, presentation of some of the panoramas that I took when we were out there. 
So, and also if you look on the left, there's some um, text that uh, will describe the event. So I'll just, so this was 145th anniversary back in uh, 2014. So Corky put himself on a, a 12 foot ladder. And as you might have seen earlier in Richard's presentation, he was shouting to the, to the crowd to um, gather themselves in front of the two locomotives. So I'll swing around to what he was photographing. So through the local OCA uh, chapter and through um, uh, news organizations, uh, Kwaki kind of arranged a flash mob uh, to show up uh, and be in this photograph. So a lot of international and national news media was uh, at the event. So this rephotographing of the uh, Golden Spike ceremony gained uh, Corky um, some national uh, presence. And so we are able to, to know that Corky's efforts uh, highlighted the importance of the uh, Chinese railroad workers in completing the, uh, the uh, western portion of the uh, railroad. Here's like a, a link that's uh, asking you to click on it. And if you do that, um, it takes you to the next scene. And here I wanted to say that uh, some, you know, the Chinese culture believes in uh, spirits uh, of their ancestors. And I felt this had uh, my way of saying that, you know, when you visit uh, a place that your ancestors uh, worked or lived or contributed to, uh, you can feel that they've done so and been there. So uh, up in the upper corner are some other scenes that you can jump to right away if you wanted to um, just uh, get to, to where uh, this would be the China uh, Chinese Arch, which is located uh, inside the national, you know, the uh, Promontory Point National uh, Park property. But this is where uh, one of the campsites that the railroad workers, uh, Chinese railroad, railroad workers, uh, used when they were uh, finished with their and um, with their daily work. So we, the group met up at the Chinese Arch. Okay. So there are other scenes that you can visit, but these are just like a, the bookends of, of, the, of, the, um, of the event that I attended with the Corky. Okay. So um, Richard showed you uh, some images uh, of the, um, book and the gallery that uh, show that uh, Richard, Caroline, and uh, Corky uh, helped curate. And we were um, asked to, to uh, participate in. So if I enter, we'll go to Lesby. So this, this link would jump you into, take you into the uh, exhibition location. And this scene will be a preparation of the uh, exhibit. Corky is framing and uh, deciding where to hang things. And Richard is uh, 
obliging by uh, holding up one of uh, Corky's images. That's I was the, the assistant. Book. I was the assistant, actually. Okay. <laughs> I dropped off some images or my or my pictures. Okay. And the interface works on mobile uh, devices. And if you're, it's like a virtual tour uh, or Google um, Street View. So you'll see that there are some uh, arrows here, like Chevron arrows that ask, that will give you a clue as to um, where the the next scene will go to. So this is this is how the exhibit looks or looked when uh, it was finally open for the viewing public. So the, and you could um, you know pr uh, visit the gallery show um, and get a a sense of what was shown by uh, the participants. Uh, for my part, since my panoramas are kind of like best viewed online, uh, but I printed them flat for the book. So you'll see that there are links of, or clickable links above the, um, uh, the photos that I presented. So it's it's one spherical 360 degree image that are, that are composed of um, of uh, say four or five uh, photographs that are stitched together uh, seamlessly. So they become um, images that don't have any borders. So you'll be able to look in any direction without running up against uh, nothing. So if you click on say. This one, that's a, uh, a moment uh, during the 9-11 uh, remembrance uh, services in Chinatown, uh, which Corky in, reminded me to go uh, take a photo of because he was going to be there. Uh, remarkably, the evening was uh, magical because the sky was um, had a had a deep blue sunset type of sky, which is I always look up for. And since it was on the anniversary of 9/11, the tribute and lights um, memorial was also showing. You can look around and find uh, a new image or see something that you haven't seen before. You'll be able to um, get a sense of, you know, it's the context of everything. I'm just gonna kill the sound here. Okay. So this is how my photography evolved after a career of uh, working behind a camera in a studio. I've, um, I'm now kind of attracted to street photography uh, with this type of um, a visual uh, literacy or visual um, ability to photograph something that I see in its entirety. So I'm constantly looking at the sky and behind me and what's around me. So If there's a little um, icon here in the corner, you click that, you'll see other images that uh, I chose for the exhibition, but um, there was only room for four. But this, these would be, um, say, one of my Chinatown uh, Luna New Year uh, parade uh, panoramas. So you do see the, the popularity of the events and you do see 
the location and you can see behind and you can see above. Uh, so it is something you can just move through and, and uh, explore on your own. So, okay, I'll close this and so that's the, um, without going beyond the, the hour, I guess we are beyond the hour. Um, that is a, an example of uh, how my work uh, has um, crossed paths with Corky. Um, so again, Corky, I remember, said, wow, your work was uh, so different. You should, um, you know, uh, show it at the, uh, the Chinese cultural uh, uh, conferences and, uh, and bring it to 21 Pell Street. Uh, so so I'm, I'm influenced by Corky and his um, compassion to document uh, the Asian community and uh, uh, recognize his tireless effort to continue even in uh, in a pandemic, you know, pandemic uh, crisis time. So I was surprised that you know he would be out on the streets, uh, uh, keeping Chinatown uh, alive with uh, activity, uh, as as you know, Karen had shown and. And Edward Cho has shown that he would uh, ask people, you know, and interact pe with people, uh, where's your favorite restaurant, and and come back and give them photos uh, that he took of them. So uh, he is um, uh, a unique individual that has a as a friend. And a uh, fellow photographer, we do miss him quite a bit and uh, can't believe that uh, Corky is, uh, uh, will only have to be uh, giving a tribute in the future. So that's, um, that's what I need to, to say. So I, I also, for people who want to view, let me get out of the uh, screen share. Okay. These are the, the two web addresses that I uh, shared on the presentation. So there are shortcuts to the events that I highlighted. The first one would go to um, the Golden Spike Ceremony, and the second link would uh, go to the uh, Lesby exhibit, and in which uh, the publication of the uh, Chinatown lens uh, book was based on. So, Juka, okay. I'll put these in the chat also so people can uh, link to them directly through that, if that's all right. Sure. So I'll put the, those should be in the chat now. I don't, I don't know if they're, if they're uh, mm -hmm. showing up as links or they're just showing up as just writing. I'll try it again. No, nope, okay. just showing up as writing somehow. Okay. Well, Juke, thank you so much. Uh, what we thought we'd do is just to show a few of uh, Corky's photographs um, from the book, and maybe um, people can, you know, talk about them, uh, or, or or we can just go through them. But um, let me uh, let me share the screen here. We can do this uh, pretty quickly, I think. Okay, this this is the one. This is one of one of my favorite photographs at, at the intersection of of Mod and Moscow, and, and you'll see that at, at the bottom um, is a description of the photograph uh, that was included in the book, and that. Uh, Corky uh, wrote himself all these descriptions, actually that each, we asked each um, artist to uh, include descriptions of their, of their photographs and, and a little bit about what they meant or what they meant to the, to the photographer. Karen, I know you want to say something about a few of the photographs. Uh, yes, um, 
This is a photograph I was with Corky. Um, I remember uh, he, he stopped for a minute and he saw that the chef to the, um, the right hand side, he saw him in his frame and he wanted to take a photo. Um, it was pretty overcast sky and, um, and he felt, you know, he wa also wanted to include the, um, the World Trade Center um, that's in the background. And uh, I remember him showing me this photo after he took it. Um, there's, to the side of this building is, um, is the newsstand where they had the, um, I think Chinatown, uh, uh, Chinatown Art Suite exhibit. Um, and I just, I remember Corky telling me that they wanted to do it in this newsstand. And I thought that's really creative. I don't know how that's, how that's gonna work out because it's so small. And he said, he'll figure it out. And he says, um, uh, don't worry, he'll even hang it, hang the show because he's got time. And uh, so I, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't get to be part of the installation uh, for that exhibit because uh, I was working, but Corky reassured me that with Velcro, anything can 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 work, and so he Velcroed my my frames without damaging the walls. And I'm not sure how he did Edwards, but but he he was very proud of it, and he took a picture to show me. Um, so Moscow Street became a fixture for Corky during that time period when he was doing this exhibit. And he was just so happy every single day there were new people that would come by and, and stop by. And it kind of became like a Corky's corner because it's sort of a corner, you know? And, um, and he had a great time telling these stories. Um, and I just know that uh, that was one of his happiest um, exhibits because it was in the community. Um, you know, even though it's not a big institution, um, it was something. <laughs> that I think he felt he can contribute to help um, bring back um, traffic and interest to Chinatown. Well, this photo is interesting because um, Quirky and I would um, often go to Doyer Street and um, there's a lot of activity just around this bend and he always, um, um, you know, and I, um, one time I told him that there is a underground tunnel for one of the buildings that connect back to the Bowery. And um, we went we went into the building to see, but it's already blocked off, but it used to be a uh, underground passage for the gangs, um, I guess, uh, back in the day when they were trying to um, um, evade from the police um, and uh, other activities. So the street is, um, very historic and part of Chinatown. And of course the architecture uh, is quite unique. So. Um, well, this, uh, this photo is on Moscow street and um, it's a little bit further down from where the, that um, newsstand is. Um, Horky had always, um, seen these chefs come out during their break. And uh, one day they were just looking at him. So I think he found the right moment to take this photo. Um, it's a quiet photo, but um, it ref reflects um, the, uh, what the day to day of what restaurant workers do when they take a break. Now this photo uh, Corky took during uh, 
one of the Veterans Day Parade. And it really looks like two photos in one because in the background you have the American Legion um, color guards. And in the foreground you have uh, the Chinese uh, beauty pageant queens. And um, Corky had asked me one day, he says, Noi, what would you like to, to call it? And I said, oh, I said, it's really interesting. Um, and uh, we talked about it a little bit and finally narrowed it down to uh, honor, duty, and a dash of beauty. And uh, that was Corky's take on this photo. Um, the veterans um, uh, were here serving um, the duty. Um, so um, the sash that um, this veteran is wearing, um, David Louie, it says, I love my country parade. Um, so, and then in, and um, the sky to the right of David Louie is Eddie Wong, uh, who passed away. Um, so, Karki has captured a lot of people uh, that's um, been in our community, but also have um, left our community. And, um, you know, when you look back, it's just, you think that they were here yesterday, but um, um, it's a, uh, Oh, okay, moving on. Uh, this photo is from Chinese New Year's and this is, it's a classic photo of lion dancers. Um, they're performing and um, I think he really wanted to show the lion dancers um, in action. Um, and so when the lion head was moved up, he was able to capture um, the um, performers. And it takes a lot of skill and agility and practice uh, to do what they do because the lion and the tail, they have to really um, interact um, and, and synchronize so that it looks like a lion dance. Um, so there's a lot um, of movement and coordination between the two lions. And um, it's um, it's always been something that Corky had loved photographing. Um, here he writes that it's to, um, the, the lion dance is during the New Year's and it's to ward off evil spirits. Um, so um, that's a Chinese tradition to see lion dancing uh, during Chinese New Year's. And uh, this photo Corky really liked. Um, he's had it in many exhibits. Um, it's of um, girls that are adopted from China and they uh, participated in the Lunar New Year's Parade. Um, and um, I believe those are the parents um, in the background. Um, they're trying to um, help them um, uh, learn more about their Chinese heritage um, by bringing them out to the parades. Um, and they're all dressed up and they look like they're having fun. Um, this is a classic quirky photo. Um, he showed that she's, he had showed this to me and um, it's of um, bachelors. Um, in the um, early days, um, many of them came um, by themselves. Um, they've really had to leave behind their families. Um, and because of exclusion laws, um, uh, the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, um, that was one of the um, acts that um, singly um, Well, yeah, it was singly um, uh, prevented 
one race from entering this country, and that was the Chinese. Um, so many of these bachelors um, were single, and uh, I was told um, by many of the Chinatown businesses that, uh, especially the old timers, they said, if, if I walk down the street as an Asian woman, um, it was a rarity. So um, uh, it was a tough time, but they, um, they formed a bond together. And that's how a lot of the um, family associations and uh, CCBA, that's how they were formed um, as a brotherhood uh, to support and advocate for each other and uh, for um, their rights. Um, so it's, um, it's, a, it's a really beautiful photo that he took, that Corky took of this image. And um, I also like to say that a lot of the bachelors, they worked in the service field. So they were butchers, um, restaurant workers, waiters, and um, they did a lot of um, the hand laundry, um, the service work back then. Um, well, here's an architecture photo um, to look at. Um, this building that um, has the, um, the kind of the um, shingle uh, rooftop uh, features. It's no longer around, um, but uh, it was once part of the Manhattan Savings Bank. And um, he kind of layered it so you can see Confucius background in, uh, in the background. Um, that was a low income housing project. Uh, Corky told me about how um, they had to go out and protest in order to um, get the city to hire uh, Asian um, American workers because um, there was no uh, contracts for minorities at that time. And uh, they felt that if it was built in Chinatown that the Chinese and other minorities could build it as well. Um, so, um, and, um, and of course you have um, housing, um, uh, 19th century housing tenements um, in the middle. So it's a really um, interesting photo of all three um, buildings. And uh, here is, um, this is more recent, Welcome to Chinatown. Um, this um, came about after uh, the Chinatown bid um, and um, these, it's, I was with Corky when he took this photo and um, we saw there were a lot of people walking and, um, and um, it was not quite dark, but dark enough. Well, not quite dark, but you could see the neon. Um, and um, it's uh, welcoming people into Chinatown. Um, that's, that, um, that was a new addition to Chinatown um, in 2016. And this is one of my favorite photos of, that Corky took of two kids on the fire escape. Um, I've always wondered where these kids were. I, I asked Corky, I said, they must, they must not look like this anymore. They're, they've got to be like, you know, much older. And um, it, will, it would be lovely if somebody knows who they are one day. And because and, um, Corky wanted to give them the photo. Um, and they, he said that they were just standing there in the fire escape and he happened to uh, see them. And um, they're um, on uh, Mulberry Street, which was located across from Columbus Park. Um, and Columbus Park always had a lot of um, activity. So maybe something was going on across the street. Um, but um, Corky's, um, uh, always knew a lot of his trivial and history. So uh, Columbus Park was originally Collect Pond Park. I remember him telling me it was a pond and that they filled it up. And so that's how um, it later became the park uh, that we know of today. And 
And here's a photo of street vendors. Um, Corky was always fascinated by them, um, the way that they make a living. Um, it's, um, it's certainly um, a lot to do it, especially when you're out in the elements. Um, rain or shine, they were always there. And, um, you know, he liked um, seeing um, that they were, they were always um, active. And um, this photo shows um, a, um, uh, I think someone, well, someone's purchasing vegetables and they're weighing it. And so um, it um, captures his, what he does, this person's daily uh, work uh, selling vegetables, the street vendor. I think that's uh, that's it for for these um, these photographs. Should we do uh, Q and A now? I think we have a few we have a few questions that have come in. Um, here's one: Will Museum of Chinese in America have an exhibit honoring him, his photos, and his Asian American politics? I think that's a great uh, question. Has anybody heard anything about that? No. Not yet, but I think it's every organization slowly just sort of trying to get out of the pandemic and just sort of like get together and things like that. But I haven't heard anything from them. Well, I think it's something that really would be great to happen. Certainly. Yeah. Um, Someone's asking about uh, what is the current situation with Corky's archives? Maybe still up in the air, is that it? I think, I think uh, that hasn't been uh, resolved yet, maybe. And um, was Corky's photography ever taken off into Brooklyn or outside New York? Well, there's that famous promontory point image, number one. And then I would always hear about Corky, like, oh yeah, it's Thai New Year. We're gonna go to the Thai temple or it's Burmese New Year. I'm gonna go across the street from the Thai temple and things like that. And he would be everywhere. Yeah. Corky actually, he did a lot of stories that um, for news publication. So he was um, like Vincent Chin that was uh, in, in Detroit. Um, he's done stories um, in uh, the Panhandler uh, area of Florida, um, you know, shrimp uh, fishermen. He was in Mississippi. Um, so he, he went to where he thought there were stories of interest. Um, so he was not uh, just confined to just New York City or the East Coast, but um, I think that um, um, is certainly where he's he lives and um, and uh, has most of his work. But um, he was always traveling and um, looking for stories. Um, there is a story from uh, Locke, California when he was out there and he photographed uh, Connie King, who um, he came back from a convention and he told me about meeting this woman that had a toilet had, had a toilet garden. And, um, and I thought I heard him wrong. I said, so what kind of garden are you talking about? And he said there was a toilet garden. So I said, okay. Um, and he showed me the photo of Connie and her toilet card. And, and he said that the reason this is a, uh, important uh, for him to photograph it was because um, Connie was one of the elders um, in one of the first planned Chinatowns um, uh, uh, built and financed by the Chinese. Um, and, uh, and they couldn't own the land. So um, one day Connie, um, saw people throwing out Chinese toilets and um, she just didn't understand why they were throwing it out because they look good to her. 
and the um, the new owners said that you know they didn't want to sit on toilets that the Chinese sat on. So she was really um, uh, um, sad and angry at the same time. So she took all these toilets back home, and and moved it and, and sat in front of her um, house. And um, she turned it into a toilet garden. She planted um, a cactus and other plants. And, and um, you know, her husband wasn't sure like how this would look to the neighbors, but she didn't really care um, because she wanted to commemorate and remember the Chinese that helped uh, build America, that helped um, with the, um, uh, building the levees uh, in Cal in the Delta River. And so that was her way to memorialize them. And so when she told Quirky that story, Quirky says, I need you in front of your toilet garden. <laughs> and um, that's, that's what he told me. And because he shared with me that um, photo, um, those subsequent years later, during a work trip, I actually took a detour just to go to La California to look for Connie and her toilet garden. And um, to my surprise, um, it, it, she was there. <laughs> like I, I didn't expect to meet Connie in person. I only heard of her through Corky. And um, Corky wasn't able to go with me at that time because he was going to another event and it, there was a, a schedule conflict. But um, I remember calling him up and telling him how wonderful it is because, you know, because of the story he told me and meeting Connie in person, and that was how he connected us. And um, in many ways, I think he, he connects people through his photographs. Uh, a few people have raised their hands and, um, you know, I would encourage anybody who's raising their hands to just put the uh, put a question in the Q&A. Um, we have a, a question about uh, if anybody knows the status of Grace Meng's recommendation to honor Corky at the Smithsonian. Mm. Um, so uh, let me see if I can uh, just uh, share the screen very briefly here for a minute. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I want to thank uh, our panelists tonight, um, Karen and Edward and, and, and Zhuk, uh, and um, I want to let everybody know that if uh, you missed some of, of this uh, event and um, would like to see parts that you missed or you know people that uh, missed the entire event, but maybe they would like to see it. Um, we are going to be posting a video of, of, uh, of the event on our Lesby YouTube channel. And so uh, that should be up uh, within the week. And um, you, can, you can get there uh, by going to www.lesby-nyc.org, which you can see uh, toward the bottom of, of, of the screen. And, uh, you know, it's hard to say um, everything that Corky meant to everybody, um, but clearly he meant a tremendous amount to a tremendous amount of people. And uh, we're all very sorry uh, that he's not with us but very impressed about uh, the huge mark he left on, on so many of our lives and really for generations to come, if you think about the body of his work. So uh, thank you all again uh, for attending. Uh, very much appreciate it. And I hope everyone uh, has a good evening. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Edward. Thank you. Thank you, Edward. Thank you, Carolyn. Thanks, everyone. And next time, I want to hear all the participants' stories of Corky. Yes. yes. Wow. Let's see, we're having a bit of a Zoom moment here.
Here we go. Okay, signing off. Thank you again, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.